Step 4. Client with quantum memories. This is our first concrete protocol about blind quantum computation. It uses a semi-classical client that has access to good quantum memories. This protocol was uh, first proposed by Andrew Childs. is actually the first blind quantum protocol. So, the client has the following quantum resources. It can apply Pauli operations, X, Y, and Z, and it also has access to a large good quantum memory, where the client can store many qubits. On the other hand, the client cannot apply non-Pauli operations, such as Hadamard gate or two qubit gates, such as a CNOT gate. And also the client is prevented from pr performing measurements. This is the basic setting. We've got a client over here, and all these circles represent quantum bits, qubits stored in quantum memories. And over here is the one-time pad machine. So the client sends the qubit through the one-time pad, applying a random Pauli matrix or a random Pauli operation to the server. The server then stores this qubit and applies the instructed operation. And then returns the qubit, which is then decoded by the one-time pad machine and stored again in the client's memory. Let's see how the delegation procedure proceeds. Number one, the client sends one or more one-time padded qubits to the server. The classical information about the gate to apply to these qubits. Number two, the server needs to apply the instructed operation to the appropriate qubits. Remember, the server, server does not know the state of the qubit because they are one-time padded, as we discussed in the previous step. And after the application of the appropriate uh, operation, the server returns the qubits back to the client. And the last step, the client decodes the one-time path um, on the stored qubits and loads them into that memory. It sounds simple, but it's the last step that is quite problematic. So we're going to examine it a little further. Let's say that we consider the first case where the client instructs the server to apply a Clifford operation. Clifford operation is a particular type of operation that transforms Pauli operations into other Pauli operations. And we denote the Clifford operation with a C. Mathematically, we would write it in the following way. That sigma prime is equal to C times sigma times C dagger. Here, this sigma over here is the original Pauli operation. It could be a single qubit operation, but it also could be a multi-qubit operation, so a tensor product of Pauli's acting on different qubits. Sigma prime is the new Pauli operation. And here, the C and C dagger are the Clifford operation and its uh, Hermitian conjugate. We read this expression as sigma is conjugated by C. So, this is how the um, decoding procedure follows. The client sends the state psi. This is the state of the qubit. After passing through the one-time uh, one pad machine, uh, the state transforms into a sigma times psi. After that, the state is in server's possession, and the server is instructed to perform a Clifford operation C. So the full state of the qubit is given by C, times sigma, times psi. Now, how can we decode this one-time pad? The hint lies in the fact that Clifford operations are unitary, meaning that the product of C dagger and C is equal to the identity. So let's take this expression for the state um, after the application of the Clifford unitary by the server and do some mathematical massaging on it. We have C times sigma times the ket psi. We can be rewritten in the following way, where we expand this uh, C dagger C, which is really just the unitary, and we put it in between the sigma and the psi. Here, we're not really changing the expression at all, because C dagger times C is equal to the identity. This way, we see that if we group these three expressions together, C times sigma times C dagger, 
really what we get is a new Pauli operation, sigma prime, as we said in the previous slide. So we have sigma prime times c times psi. This tells us exactly what the new decoding Pauli is. When the client receives the qubit from the server, the client needs to apply this new Pauli operation, and that will ensure that the state of the qubit is left in the desired state, where the client simply applied the Clifford operation C to its initial state psi. Now the client can store this in, in, in the quantum memory. This is the simple case, when the desired operation is a Clifford operation. What happens if this is not true, if the desired operation is a non-Clifford operation? In fact, the client must use some non-Clifford unitaries as well in order to execute a unitary quantum uh, computation. And for concreteness, we're going to use a particular example in that of a T-gate. T-gate has the following form. It only has diagonal elements, 1 and e to the i pi over 4. Again, we have two cases. Either the one-time path Pauli operation commutes with the T-gate, which makes things very simple, because then the one-time padding operation sigma commutes with T, so we can simply swap their order. This way we see that sigma that was used for encoding can also be used to decode the state when it's received from the server, and then uh, the client ends up with the correct state, T applied to the initial state psi. But what if the one-time pad operation does not commute with the T-gate? Then things get a little bit trickier and we have to work a little bit harder. This happens when the encoding Pauli contains an X or a Y. So in this case, we can also change the order in which we apply the T-gate and the encoding Pauli. If we swap the order, however, the T picks up a dagger. So this is not quite the operation that the client wanted to apply. But the client can fix it. The client can accept this qubit, apply the same Pauli operation sigma that was used for encoding, and send the same qubit back to the server but this time instructing the server to apply an S-gate. An S-gate is a Clifford operation, and also it has the nice property that the S-gate can be uh, obtained as a product of two T-gates. So T squared is equal to S. This means that if the client sends the uh, previously received qubit state back, so T dagger psi, and asks the server to apply the S operation, that will transform the state into T applied to the initial state um, generated by the client, state psi. This is exactly what the client wanted to achieve initially. And also, because S is a Clifford gate, we know how to decode it. If the encoding Pauli is X or Y, the operation applied by the server is T, the server needs to further apply an S operation, as we said. However, there's a big problem here. This gives the server a hint about the encoding. Imagine that every time we encode using an X or a Y Pauli matrix, we give it to the server, the server knows that we are asking, them, asking uh, it to apply a T gate, and then we send the qubit back and we say apply an S gate. This tells the server, aha, for that qubit, the one-time pad operation was X or a Y. This leaks information to the server, which the client wants to prevent. What we can do, or what the client can do, is the client can ask the server to apply an S after every T. Even if the encoding was Z, when applying the S uh, gate is not necessary, what the client can do is they can just send an ancilla qubit, ask the server to apply the S gate, and then discard the qubit. So we are nearly done. We know how to handle Clifford operations, we know how to handle non-Clifford operations which commute and also which do not commute with the encoding. But the server can still learn information about the computation. 
in, in effect, what the client is doing, it's asking the server, first apply unitary U1, then apply the unitary U2, so that the server keeps the whole transcript of all the desired unitaries, and at the end, the server can just compute the product of these unitaries to obtain the full quantum computation. Again, the client can prevent this, rather by asking the server to apply the exact U1, U2, U3, up to UN, it can keep applying a fixed set of gates in a fixed order. Let's say this universal set of gates, a Hadamard, a C naught, a T gate, and an S gate. So the client keeps encoding its qubits, sending it to the server and saying, now apply H, now apply C naught, now apply T, now apply S, and then go rolls back to H, C naught, T, and S, and so on. But Rather than sending all the computational qubits, it can send the computational qubits only when they are needed, when it's time to apply the correct unitary, and when the uh, unitary that's being applied is not the desired one, the client can simply s s send an ancilla, which is not part of the computation. So this way the client can retain the blindness. The server does not know what states it's receiving, and it also does not know what operations it is applying. This is the basic idea behind a semi-classic client which has access to good quantum memories and a one-time path. But this protocol cannot guarantee the integrity of the data. It cannot check whether the server is being malicious or if it's being truthful and following the instructions um, obtained from the client. In order to guarantee that, we have to work a little bit harder and we will show you how to do that in the next lesson.